What's best for building muscle? High intensity but low frequency training or higher frequency and lower intensity training? I turned 46 next month, but when I was 30, I was in terrible shape. Now I lost the fat, but even at age 43, I didn't have much muscle on my body at all. And I had virtually nothing in my chest, which really inspired me to start building some muscle about two years ago. And in the last two years, I've put on eight kilograms or 18 pounds of muscle. And I was recently asked this question in one of my videos. So let me break it down for you. Now I'll break this down into two categories. One is beginners who haven't mastered the technique and the fundamental lifts. And two is for those who have mastered technique. So the fundamental lifts, I mean, bench pressing, bent over row, pull-ups, shoulder press, squats, deadlift, split squats. Just the basic movement patterns that I believe are critical to master before you go on to heavier and more intense workouts. And the reason why is because if you don't have your technique dialed in and you try to up the intensity in your workouts, then you have a much higher risk of injury and injury is the, you know, the worst thing for you. Now I do the Unified Movement System or UMS, which is a hybrid of calisthenics and weights. And clearly I'm not a bodybuilder, but if you look at this picture of me only a couple of years ago, the main thing is you can't see my lats here, but if you have a look at my chest and then compared to now, I mean, I'm not a bodybuilder, but you can see I've definitely put on some muscle. And I mean, it shows on the scales. I've put on eight kilograms in the last two years. So this is what works for me and it's what's worked for a lot of my clients around the world and I really believe it'll work for you. And I don't take steroids or any performance enhancing drugs or anything like that. I'm about to turn 46. So this is good information in my opinion. So for beginners, I really believe that you want to master the technique in those fundamental lifts. And for that reason, I think it's better to train higher frequency and lower intensity because training higher, frequent, higher intensity means you need more recovery, means you can't train as often. And when you're trying to master technique, the more reps you do, the more sets you can do on your bench press in a week, the quicker you're going to get better at the bench press. So I think it's better to train with a lower intensity, but be able to get more sessions done in one week. And it's also much safer. And then when you've mastered the technique in those fundamental lifts, you can move into that stage where you start to increase the intensity by using either just a higher intensity workout, or you can start using overload techniques. So things like drop sets and supersets and rest pause method. These are all things that really should only be explored once you have exhausted the gains that you can get just from regular alternating sets. So when you're doing say a set of bench press and then you pair it with a set of bent over row, that's just your alternating set methodology. I think a lot of people jump into these higher intensity training uh, overload techniques far too soon because it's really you really should only mix things up like that when you cannot make progress anymore from just basic training, just doing your five sets of eight reps or five sets of 10 reps. Now this is by no means am I trying to say this is the ultimate way to train. There are so many different ways that you can build muscle and you can do it in so many different ways. You can do it like, you know, people can build muscle by going to failure at five reps or going to failure at 30 reps. But this is what's worked for me, and I believe this is a really good way to go about it because it keeps the workouts to roughly about 60 minutes, and you can get the volume in that you need, and you can do it safely, and you can you know, prepare yourself for those more high-intensity workouts. And so it, you know, the program split that you're going to do is going to completely depend on how much time you've got. You know, Some people can only train three days a week, and some people can train six days a week. I personally always recommend that you have Sunday off, that you, like I train six days a week, but I never train on Sunday. And what I do is I, tr I do a deload on Friday and Saturday. So both Friday and Saturday are deload days for me. And I'm currently doing a split now because I'm focusing on developing calisthenics strength and skill. So I do only a two day split, which means I have a bent arm strength day which I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then I have a straight arm strength and legs day that I do Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And so because I'm doing so, so many um, workouts on the same muscle group and on the same movement in a week, I deload every week. And if I wasn't, if I was doing six days a week like that and I wasn't deloading every week, then I would probably need to do a full deload week every fourth week, maybe even every third week, because it's so much volume and it just, that volume really banks up. So there's so many different ways you could do it. You, you could do it where you do your six days, like the exact split that I'm doing, and every day you're doing, 
at full volume, so you're not deloading. And then on your third week, you'd do a full deload week where all six days you'd only do 40% volume. You could do it that way. Personally, I don't like that. I'd rather doing it the way, do it the way that I'm doing it. Uh, another way that you can do it is you can do multiple different workouts throughout the week. So a program splits that we use in the UMS with our members that's really effective is you can do a bent arm strength day, a squat day, uh, a, a, sorry, a bent arm strength with vertical push pull, a squat day, a bent arm strength with horizontal push pull, a deadlift day, and then you could do a hip thrust day. You can do a straight arm strength day and you can mix that up in different ways so that you're only training the same muscle group every third day instead of every second day. And that way you don't need to deload as much because you're getting more recovery between each workout, but it means that you're not getting the same amount of volume on the movements. And there's pros and cons to doing it either way. So there isn't a right and wrong way to do it. There's just different ways to do it. And something that I should say as well is as a beginner, you will get better results just from turning up and banking reps, which is why I say higher frequency, lower intensity. But as you get better you will need to you will hit plateaus and when you come to that point where you've mastered the you know of course 10 years later you'll still be better at the technique but when you can at least do the technique of those seven fundamental lifts without making it look like a dog's breakfast when you come to that point and you are hitting plateaus you're not building more strength you're not building more muscle that's when it's useful to start using more creative periodization. So you can start messing around with different rest times, different tempos, doing pause reps, things like that would even still potentially come in to your training. You could then start doing overload techniques as well. So start simple with just something like supersets and then you can move into drop sets and rest pause and things like that. But you only start doing that stuff when you've exhausted what you can gain from you know just training. Now at the end of all of that, the most important thing to do is really to just keep training. So make sure that you're turning up, you're doing your workouts, you're following a smart program that uses structural balance so that you don't develop imbalances and get injuries in your body and that you use progressive overload, hopefully in each week, but definitely using program periodization every four weeks so that you're never plateauing, so that you're never just stuck at that same spot. And if you want to really take your training to the next level, like I did, it's important to work with a coach. I've worked with heaps of coaches over the last 20 years, and that's how I had my biggest breakthroughs. And something that we offer for you guys to be able to get started with us is we have a 28 day strength and flexibility challenge so that you can come in, get full online personal training with myself and my team, get a custom strength and flexibility program created for you, where I'll give you a program split that suits your schedule, that suits your needs and your goals, that takes into consideration your injury history, you know, everything about what you've done in the past, where your experience level is, because you know you need a program that's reflecting where you're at, you know, whether you're in that beginner stage or whether you're in that more advanced stage and you wanna start working with overload techniques. So if that sounds like something you wanna do, if you wanna have a similar result to me where you can put on you know, 20 pounds of muscle in a relatively short amount of time, you know, not using things like steroids and stuff like that, not taking any, any cheats, but doing it the right way, doing it a way that's sustainable with realistic workouts that take about 60 minutes that aren't just gonna build muscle, but that are also gonna build flexibility, then head on over to unitygym.com and get started on the 28 Day Strength and Flexibility Challenge. You'll be working with me, Yanni, and our team directly inside the UMS app. It gives you full access to the whole UMS and the app, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching, everything, all the stuff that, that our members get, but without a subscription, it's just a one-time payment. So head on over now, get started, and let's pack on some muscle and get you where you wanna go.